What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. Well, his fan base ain't gonna like these videos, but I don't give a damn. At the end of the day, it's an ongoing, constant campaign against Michael Jordan's legacy for his side. Constantly trying to dismantle his legacy, his era, his contemporaries, Kobe. They're starting to do that to his generation. So my little old channel, where I'm putting up facts, things that actually happened, instead of just ridiculous, you know what I'm saying, far-fetched, pulling out of our ass crack, made up narratives and outright falsities when it comes to their side. I mean, at the end of the day, what's fair is fair. So, look, I just did a video about how even though he was on a super team, the NBA still conspired to make the path for a championship easier for the brick because the year before, in the finals where everything was pretty much on the on the even tip as far as calls, because of his historically awful performance in that finals, the heavily favored Miami Heat lost to the Mavericks. So it wasn't enough for him to be on a super team. They had to rig it via calls. I already talked about how they screwed the Knicks, who owned the Heat that season, 2012-2013, right? But did you know that after 2010, 2011, the year they lost to the Mavericks, LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, despite being on a super team, instead of saying, you know what, we lost to Dallas, we're still trying to build our chemistry. We're going to come back and be better next year. We're going to learn from our mistakes, be more motivated, and we're going to come back and win a championship in 2012. Instead of that being their motivation, remind you, they still had, they still had Chris Bosh on the team. They tried to get even more overpowered. They tried to acquire Chris Paul, and it nearly succeeded. Now, when I first heard about this, I said, okay, well, they must have had Chris Bosch in the trade. Because how could they afford Chris Paul? But apparently, I think Wade and LeBron were willing to take even less money. I think they were willing to somehow restructure their contracts. Maybe all three of them. So they would take even less money. And plus, I think when you sign someone to a one- or two-year deal, there's an exception where you could kind of go over as far as money's concerned. I forgot exactly uh, all the specifics. But whatever the case may be, they were all willing to take less money to sign Chris Paul short-term. As we all know, at that time, I think Chris Paul was a member of the I think they were then the New Orleans Hornets. Remember, me serve me correctly. They almost got him, man. So it would have been LeBron James in his absolute prime, way close to his prime, Chris Bosh in that third role, but playing with a Chris Paul, I'm imagining life would be easier for him. And Chris Paul in his absolute prime. This is 22 and 12 and two steals, Chris Paul. The best point guard in the NBA, Chris Paul. Would have been playing with the best small forward in the game. Next to Kobe, the best shooting guard in the game. And Dwayne Wade. And one of the best power forwards in Chris Bosh. Now, how is this? How, come on, man. Are you even trying to compete anymore? Are you even trying to compete? 
But it didn't happen because of vanity. Not the singer. She ain't had nothing to do with this, you know. <laughs> I'm talking about Dwayne Wade's unwillingness to give up his 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 number three jersey. Because you know, Chris Paul wears number three. So that is what stopped it. They were talking about it recently. I mean, but do you remember the call with Brian, you and I, when we were thinking about when Riley wanted to trade to bring you to Miami? Absolutely. You I remember when we get on the phone? I was sitting in my condo and CJ was sitting. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, CJ was sitting on the couch. We was talking about who's going to have the ball in their hands, how it's going to work. We're having a conversation. Yep, we're having a conversation, right? And then who was it? Was it CJ? Was it CJ that said something about who's going to wear number three? Bro, <laughs> that's what I wanted to get to. That's, that's how the trade ain't happened. That's the whole trade up. Yeah, Because CP could wear number three in Miami. That's Listen, the whole trade up. I don't know what they was going to do. Because you was older, you probably could have just went. No, 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 I wasn't older. You was older than me. I was was in my prime. I know, but because you older than me, you just wear 33. Do you want to sacrifice everything else? He didn't want to sacrifice his damn number. I'll tell you. Listen, I'll sacrifice not getting touches. (laughs) I'll sacrifice not getting the articles read and not getting the most money. But I'm not giving up my number. Well, if you listen there, you heard him try to clean it up when he said, Braun and I were trying to uh, pet Riley. <laughs> Colluding, bro. Man, oh, man. I mean, ain't it enough that you got Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh? Is that not enough? And this goes for Dwayne Wade, too, because this affects his legacy as well. That's why I put him down. Like my opinion matters, but still. At the end of the day, that's that, that that's weak. That's whack, man. That's whack and it's weak. And the more I, I read about and find out about what this dude was doing behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? It it, it really makes me look at him as yeah, I'm gonna have to revise my opinion about him being a top five or six player. Yeah, I don't even think that. Nope. 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 Can't do it. Can't. Can't, man. I don't care how many points this guy scores, man. And you still have a losing finals record. Nope. Can't do it, bro. The way this guy moves as a basketball player is disgusting. It's disgusting. He, he, he ruined the NBA, man, in a lot of ways. But I'm glad there's finally a pushback on this stuff now. You know, I'm glad that, that the super team era is starting to come to an end or pretty much has come to an end as far as these guys just want to link up and beat everybody. I'm, I'm glad that that's finally coming to an end, man. You know what? I think they should put an asterisk on some of these dudes' accomplishments just like they did the steroid era, right? I mean, look. You got people like Manny Ramirez and Rafael Palmero and Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds. Even though Barry should be in the Hall of Fame because his accomplishments for what he did before you even suspect he used steroids. He's been in the Hall of Fame. But anyway, Roger Clemens. All these guys are not in the Hall of Fame because of either they failed drug tests or people suspect that they failed drug tests. Or, or, or suspected they were, uh, not not suspected failed drug testing, suspected they didn't, they weren't playing clean. They suspect these guys were using performance enhancing drugs. But yet, this guy was cheating all the way through. Cheating as far as colluding with other players to try to put, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to put all of the cards in his favor, the entire deck. I agree with Charles Barkley on this one, man. Like it, it's not enough for you to just have a good team that's championship level and go compete. You gotta have every damn good player. But of course, Shaq will get mad at it because Shaq did the same damn thing, stacking the deck. Or when he became a journeyman. 
and just went to try to go chase a ring. So yeah, it makes sense. If, if he did that as far as a player with, with competition, <clears throat> people should suspect that he, you know, did something or is doing something. But you know, the internet got shut down, not shut down, but people that on the internet was we were sleuthing about that. Yeah, we got shut down on that one. Mm-hmm. That's why I ain't bring it up no more. Not on YouTube, at least. But um, we already know that he tried to pull that with Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving hit the biggest shot in Cleveland Cavaliers history and one of the biggest shots in the NBA Finals history. What essentially was the championship winning shot of three-point over Steph Curry, game seven of the 2016 NBA Finals. And somehow the moment became and has become only about LeBron James. That three-point shot, his performance, Averaging, what was he averaging? 27 points per game in that final? But somehow it's LeBron and a bunch of bums. That's what the media does. They they totally erase everybody else from the picture. It's a cult of personality, man. You've seen dictators do this. Dictators, when they take power and, and they want all the glory for themselves and they want to brainwash the masses into being submissive and never questioning the dictator, the leaders, or the leadership. They have to prompt that leader to being superhuman to being above humanity a god he has to be a, at least a demigod and by that extension he has to erase all the others that helped to prop him up to that position when he was weaker when he was vulnerable they have to be erased from the scene history has to be rewritten and that's exactly what we see here this is what they're doing gestapo tactics or should I say, look Gestapo ta tactics. That's exactly what, what they were doing in that regime. As far as propaganda or look propaganda, that's exactly what they were doing. And this is what they're doing here. Question him and see what happens. Criticize him in the media and see what happens. These guys are scared to, crit to speak their mind, man. <laughs> but yeah, Kyrie Irving hit the biggest shot in Cavaliers history. And two weeks later, this Humpty Dumpty head nigga waltzes into the general manager's office and behind his back, Kyrie's back, tries to get, I believe it was Chris Paul. Traded. To the Cavaliers, I'm assuming exchange for Kyrie, and that's why Kyrie wanted out. In addition to other stuff, but anyway, just want to put this out there. Cap on his legacy, or the legacy is is his legacy or the legacy is a fraud, man. Mm -hmm.